Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Mitch. And we're here at Blockhouse Studios to talk to you about multi-projector configurations using the Epson Projector Professional Tool. The Pro Series boasts dynamic projection capabilities with advanced tools like tiling assist, edge blending, and auto color adjustment for fast installation of single or multi-projector setups, all of which utilize internal cameras or external clip-on cameras and are controlled via the Epson Projector Professional Tool, or EPPT software. At Blockhouse Studios, we specialize in large-scale projection mapping. In a recent project, we installed five 15,000 lumen and four 20,000 lumen projectors. These projectors ran every evening for an entire month. Epson's Pro Series projectors were the obvious choice for this project. They were easy to install, simple to use, and more importantly, dependable for this long-term installation. We very rarely use just one projector in the field. The ability to control multiple projectors simultaneously is an essential feature for us. With the EPPT software for the Pro Series projectors, Epson has made tiling, blending, and stacking projectors a simple process we can depend on. In this video, we'll cover all of the settings we utilize to make multi-projector configurations a breeze, along with some examples of how multiple projectors can be used to their full potential. First things first, turn on both of your projectors and place them in the correct position for your specific needs. Before performing any camera assist functions or color adjustments, it's important to let the internal component temperatures stabilize for at least 20 minutes. This means your AV mute needs to be turned off and the projector fully on. Now we need to make sure that both projectors are on the same network. Before we can jump into the EPPT software, it is extremely important for us to determine which of our projectors is the primary projector. This is essential for automatic calibration to run correctly. The best way to determine which projector is the primary is to choose the projector with the highest amount of operation hours. This will generally be the dimmer of the two projectors. You can find which projector has more operation hours if you go into the standard menu on the projector. Go to the Info tab, then select Projector Info, and locate the operation hours. We will use this information later on in the video, so make sure that you remember which of the two projectors is the primary projector. Finding your primary projector is crucial to this process because the auto calibration can lower the projector's laser intensity down, but it cannot increase the projector's laser intensity past 100. Now that we've located our primary projector, we are ready to jump into the EPPT software. Inside the software, you can start a new project. You should be able to see all of your projectors on your network. Since we are using two projectors, we can see both of them here. However, if you are using more, all of those projectors would be found here as well. Now select the Settings tab and click on the Initial Settings, then Reset All Config. This will reset all of the projectors to ensure that they are all identical to one another. You can skip this step if you have projector settings that are essential to your specific needs or if you have already matched both projectors. For teaching purposes, we are going to start with a clean slate. Now we'll return to the layout monitoring menu. Let's create a new group of projectors. First, we ensure that all the projectors are still selected. Click Edit Group and then click Create a new group for your projectors. We'll name this group EPPT Training for the sake of our demonstration. Now click the Tiling and Stacking settings. In our example, we are creating two horizontal projectors, but you can also set up multiple projectors vertically. You will see the projectors on the right under layer 1. Below the perspective view window, you should see the name of all of your projectors. Drag the projector from the list to the layer window on the right. Make sure the projector is the same orientation in the layer window as the real projector in your physical space. Once in position, click OK and then click OK again. Now we have a group. You can select your group and click Settings and then Camera Assist. Before doing the automatic screen matching, let's look at the conditions for this process. These conditions are ideal conditions, but we have been able to use screen matching and geometry correction in other scenarios that are less than ideal. 
The software can handle less accurate alignments than what you see here, but if possible, I try to make my alignments as accurate as I can so that my final image will have the highest possible resolution. Select screen matching and select your primary projector in that screen, which for us is our right projector as we determined earlier. Then select the start screen matching. You should see a loading window with the executing symbol. This should take about nine or 10 minutes, so go ahead and get a cup of coffee while you're waiting. Once the auto calibration screen matching process is complete, both screens should be identical. If you're happy with the results, click preserve results and finish. If your calibration failed or you're having trouble, make sure that the projector meets the ideal conditions that we specified earlier. Ambient light in the area can interfere with this, so make sure that there's no light spilling on your screen. Now that screen matching is done, you should be in the camera assist menu. Under geometry correction assist, click tiling, then click start. This will take you to step one, blend range settings. Again, the same ideal conditions apply as the screen matching conditions. However, we have used this on slightly irregular surfaces and have gotten more than acceptable results. Now click start. It will ask you for the horizontal blend range value. The horizontal blend range value is the amount of pixels overlapped between your two projectors. You will want to overlap your projectors anywhere from 288 to 825, 14% to 43%. This depends on your installation needs. For our install, we are entering 360 pixels under the horizontal blend range. Don't worry about making this perfect, but try to get it as close as possible. You should now be in step two, check position. At this point, your projector should look similar to the image displayed in the tiling function window. You'll notice there are small cyan T's on your projector screen. These T's indicate the outer edge of the blend overlap. You can use the horizontal shift to adjust the blend overlap amount. You want to make sure that the T's fit within the frame as shown. Once that is set, click Next. A measuring indication will appear on the screen. This should take approximately two minutes to fully adjust. This is automatically taking you through step three. Your projector should now be blended and aligned properly. Once that is complete, step four is shape correction. This is where you can do single pixel adjustments to make sure that your corners are pinned correctly. Click next. Now your projectors should be blended and aligned. In step five, if you are happy with the results, click save and exit. If you skipped the screen matching step previously, you can click continue to screen matching here. Now we are gonna move on and demonstrate the stacking assist function. Some of Epson's newer Pro Series projectors can provide stacking assist function without the EPPT software or a connected laptop. So the first step is we're going to select both of our projectors, go to Edit Group, Group. We're going to call this EPPT Stacking. Then we can go to Tiling and Stacking Settings, and we're gonna say two, because we're gonna use two projectors here. Then we can take one projector and put it on our layer one and the other and put it on layer two. Click OK. OK again. Now we have a group layer one and layer two. We can then go to settings and then we can choose camera assist. Under camera assist, you're going to select stacking. Then we can click start. Now, our goal is to make one projector slightly larger than the other. Both of our projectors are shifted to their outer edges, so we're gonna bring them both back to center and get them aligned with each other. So let me move this one back, and we're gonna move the other projector. Okay, so in this case, our teal projector is going to be our larger one. We want the red one to cover as much of the teal one while still being just inside the edge. So we're gonna use our zoom control here um, and we're going to make 
that projector a little bit wider. Just a little bit of lens adjustment. There we go. Okay, so now our red box is as large as it can be while still being contained in the teal box. Now we can click next. Now the EPPT software is going to take over this process and get both of these projectors perfectly stacked. Okay, now the process is complete. This will give you a four corner point correction. If for some reason it's a little bit crooked or you wanna expand it out a bit more, this is where you can do that. You can also turn on a pattern display if you wanna see the numbered corners. And you can do your incremental shape correction or choose how many pixels you wanted to move at a time if you want more drastic adjustment. I'm happy with what we have here. So let's go ahead and click next. So we have a couple different things. We can do some pattern displays or some pattern text. As you can see, all of our text is perfectly aligned. None of it has a double image or any weird distortion going on. And you can also display content, which will be whatever your computer is outputting at the moment. Okay, so I'm happy with the result here and I'm gonna click save the result and exit. So now we've completed our stacking auto calibration and I'm just gonna demonstrate by turning off one of these layers. If we go back to our layout monitoring panel, we can uh, double check this and we could uh, pull up our quick controls and go ahead and close the shutter. You can see that it gets dimmer, but the image stays on. So if we turn that back on, there we go, it gets a little brighter. We can do the same thing with projector two if I close the shutter. There we go. So this kind of demonstrates if you had a projector failure or something happened with the signal cable, um, you could quickly shutter that projector and still have your content without interruption. It would get slightly dimmer, but this gives you a nice redundancy for critical operations. The ability to use multiple projectors is a feature we wouldn't be able to work without. The Epson's Pro Series projectors and their EPPT software have been crucial in our setup processes. Time-saving and easy to use, the EPPT software has made multi-projector setups much more efficient. Epson's Pro Series projectors are an essential part of our toolkit that we rely on for the most challenging and demanding projects. We hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful for your next projection project. If you're curious about some of our other work or have questions about how we utilize these projectors, please check out our website or follow us on Instagram. From everyone here at Blockhouse Studios, thanks for watching.